Hello, everybody. Usually my name is the Star Sprinkle. Today I think my name is going to be Serendipity, I believe, because I'm playing under a friend's account. That's not important. The important thing is that my parents bought this game that I kept telling them about art. So I'm going to do a quick little guide today and tutorial, kind of starting off what is important if maybe you're not a first time gamer but you wanted to play this game because you thought it was interesting because your daughter made it sound really cool because it's a pretty cool game so let's get into it i'm gonna go host slash local you can do split screen through this this is just gonna be single player so first things first you're gonna start out on the island it's just the first one that you're gonna do it's the best place to start honestly these over here, under general, on the left hand side of the screen, you're gonna want to go through these and select certain ones to either increase or decrease, just to make your game a little bit easier and more fun. I like it because it's a little more relaxing for me. It lets you focus a little more on doing activities during the game like Tame Dinosaurs and Exploration instead of so much the gathering and the grinding and grinding and grinding trying to get all the items you need to build things sometimes. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put the difficulty down to one. I mean, you can even put it down even farther than that. I put it at point one. You might wanna put it at point zero or point zero five. It's not that much of a difference because I mean, it only starts off at, what, it started off at point two or something. It's, it's not a big leap. So I usually put that down. And off to the side it says, affects the levels of creatures in the world as well as the quality of loot drops. So it's gonna get you better loot and uh, the level of creatures is gonna be higher or lower depending on what this is at. So if it's way up over here, you're gonna get really, really high level animals. It's gonna be harder to tame your dinosaurs. So I would put it down here, maybe at a point one, point two, just to kind of keep it simpler. Dino damage specifies the scaling factor for the damage dinosaurs deal with their attacks. So if you want to get less damage done to you when a dinosaur decides to attack you, you know, put that down a little bit. You don't have to put it down too much, you know, maybe just 0.85 or something. Player damage, how much damage you do, maybe put it up a notch or two. I'm going to put it at 1.15 structure damage, so it specifies the scaling factor for the damage structures deal with their attack. So if you have like spiked walls, or later on in the game you can even get turret, and that's going to be really cool. But later on when you get turret, those will be able to do more damage too. I'm just going to leave this at once, it doesn't really affect me as much right now. Player resistance I'm going to leave alone, that's going to be like the heat and the cold, pretty sure. So it specifies the scaling factor for the resistance to damage players receive when attacked. Higher value decreases the resistance, increasing damage per attack. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone, leave that alone, leave that alone. The experience multiplier, this one's gonna be really important. You're gonna to wanna to put this one probably all the way up. Honestly, it doesn't make much of a difference however fast you're leveling throughout the game, but the faster you level, the more fun you're going to have because as you level, you gain the ability to craft more objects. So you really, really want to level up quickly so that you can have more things to craft and to um, forward you in your game. Taming speed, I'm going to go ahead and put that up too because I want my dinosaurs to be my best friends as fast as possible. Uh, we're going to leave that alone, we're going to leave that alone. Dino harvesting damage, you're probably going to want to turn that up because higher numbers increase the damage dinosaurs deal with harvestable items. So higher number means faster resource collection. I'm going to turn that so we can get items faster. Harvesting amount, I'm going to turn that up so we can get more items every time that we're harvesting things. I would suggest putting it up all the way because like I said, the less time you spend grinding and collecting rocks and collecting wood and collecting your base items, the more fun you're going to have because you're going to get to build more things and tame more stuff. Player character water drain, I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. Food drain, leave that alone. Dino food drain, leave that alone. Stamina drain, I'm going to maybe put that down a notch. Dino character stamina drain, I'm going to put that down a few notches. 
just because as you're playing, if you're on a dinosaur in a saddle and you're like trying to gather berries or you're attacking another dinosaur maybe, you really don't want your dinosaur to run out of stamina too soon and it kind of feels like something that they really do a lot. Even when you, you play on default settings, the dino stamina drain feels like it goes very, very quickly. Like within two or three attacks, a lot of the time your dinosaur stamina is completely drained especially depending on what dinosaur you're on. Player character health recovery. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything. Maybe also flavor harvesting damage. Higher number increases the damage players deal to harvest or items. So you're just gonna get items faster. Things are gonna break more quickly. There's also some other things down here that might be good to turn on. So like notify your player left, if someone leaves, you're gonna get notified, joined, you're gonna get notified. Um, one thing that I would turn on is, you can disable the friendly fire. I would probably turn that on if you want a, an easier experience so you're not hitting each other. But also I would turn on show player map location. Just so if you plot your map, you can see it really well. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna play a single player. So the game's gonna take a minute to load, but that's okay. It's just gonna give you <laughs> more time to think about what dinosaurs you really, really wanna tame during your game. One of the really cool things about Ark is that as you're playing, you're gonna find boxes sometimes that are going to have explorer notes in them. If you gather an explorer note, you actually get an experience bonus for a short amount of time. So that's also going to help you level up faster, which is going to get you more items to craft. And then more saddles for dinosaurs. And riding dinosaurs is really the point of this. Okay, so as you can see, you can make your character. I'm just going to start out with base female. Doesn't really matter. I don't really care. We're going to start out zone one in the south because it's easy. I'm going to name myself... Star. Okay, create new survivor. Woo! It's bright. Ooh, so shiny. So here we are waking up on the beach. It's real pretty. We got some birds around us and stuff. It's real nice. I'm gonna try and turn a little more slowly, so hopefully I'm not making you dizzy. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go around and you see these on the beach. If you go up to it while you have your hands out, you press triangle and that will pick up a rock. So if you press circle, that opens your inventory and now you have 10 rocks. If you press R1 while you're in your inventory, it'll switch over to your crafting and it'll show you the different things that you have to craft. If you hover over each item, it will open up not only a small description of the item, the durability, the weapon damage, it'll also show you the crafting requirements, which is what you're gonna need before you can make that specific item. So we're gonna try and make a stone pickaxe first because that's gonna help us harvest even more items later on. So we're gonna need stone, which we have already by picking up that one rock thatch and wood. Before we do that, let's go ahead and give us our level up. We can go over to the center right here. This gives you all your stats and everything. And later on, you see these boxes that say head, torso, legs, feet, offhand, hands. Those can all be equipped with different clothing items. So you can put pants in here on your legs, or you can put like a hat on your head. You can also scroll over to these little plus signs and see we have one point available for level up so we can go ahead and give ourselves more health, stamina, oxygen, food, water. We can carry more weight. We can do more melee damage. We can have more movement speed, increase our crafting skill or our fortitude. I like to go ahead and start leveling up your health pretty quickly. Health, stamina, and I think weight are probably some of the most important ones besides melee damage. You're gonna wanna do a lot of melee damage. Um, one of the most 
most important things is this is a survival game. You're gonna want to get the campfire. You're gonna want to get the stone hatchet. You're gonna want to get all these things so that you can make something to cook any meat that you get from dodos. So let's run over here. We're gonna punch this using R2. So the trigger, R2, that's going to punch this tree. See, we got 47 thatch and 5 wood. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen. We also have another level up, so I'm going to press circle to open my inventory. And here we have our different items. I'm going to go ahead and level up myself again. I'm going to give myself more weight because that's going to be really important. I'm going to use my engram points to buy this spear. And then also probably some pants and a shirt. Those are going to be really important. So since I have enough items now, I'm going to open up my crafting. And using R2 to just craft one item, I'm going to craft the stone pickaxe. If you use triangle, it'll craft as many as possible. And if you hit square, it will make um, five or less. So like I only have enough items to make three more of these pickaxes. So if I press square, it would make three. But if I had enough items to make 10 of these pickaxes and I press square, it would only make five. You can also look up at the top of your screen where it says R2 craft one, uh, triangle craft all or three, and then square, which is craft three. Okay, so I made my pickaxe. I'm going to go back to my inventory. You hover over the pickaxe and you press X to select it. And then you can go down and you can put the pickaxe anywhere that you would like in your action bar down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it here on my action bar. I'm going to press circle to close my inventory again. And first things first, to use your action bar, we have the first four buttons, which is going to be your directional pad on your controller. So I don't have anything in the left button controller, but I have my pickaxe in the up button controller. And if you press it a second time, it'll put it away and equip your hands again. So I press it up to equip it, and I press it up again to put it away. I also don't have anything in my right directional button. And I don't have anything in my down directional button. To use any of the other squares on your action bar, you're going to want to hold down L1. And you see how that switches your uh, availability from the left side of the action bar to the right side of the action bar. So if I were to go ahead and put, say, let's see. Okay, I can't put that in my hand. But if I were to move this over here, and then if you press triangle, you're just going to try and grab things, as you can see. <laughs> I just picked up some stones again, and I leveled up again. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more health on there. Grab some more clothes, because clothes is going to be really important so that you're not freezing to death. And then we're going to hold down L1, and then press triangle to equip your hatchet. But I like to keep your important tools just on your like the first few buttons so it's easier to get to. And then you can go up to either a big rock or a tree and you can get much more thatch and wood than you could before. So this pickaxe isn't going to work on small rocks like this, but it is going to work on big rocks like these over here. So you can run up to any of these rocks. You can use R2 to smash these rocks, and you're going to get a whole bunch of different items. And it's going to be much more items than you would normally get if you didn't put any of those buffers up. So now that we have a whole bunch of different items, I'm going to go R1 to go to my crafting. I'm going to craft, use R2 to craft my stone hatchet. I'm going to use R2 again to craft campfire. And I'm also going to go ahead and make myself a torch. Torches are also really important because if you start to get too cold, 
you can pull out your torch and it'll warm you up a little bit so it'll keep you from freezing to death in certain situations not in all situations but at least if you're not like in the snow it should do the trick in like rain or anything like that so in your inventory you go ahead and select your campfire you can put it in any hand that you want i'm just gonna make a house you know i'm probably gonna make a house closer down the beach this way there's a little bit more resources and materials over here. There's a little bit more plant life. So it's going to mean that we can go back and harvest more often. There's Brontosaurus. Okay, so Dodos, those are friendly. Those are fine. Brontosauruses, those are friendly unless you hit them. So if you don't hit them or else they will come after you and they will stomp you into the earth. These uh, turtles, these turtles are just fine. They're, they're plenty, plenty fine. If you find yourself getting too thirsty, you go up to the water and you press triangle and that will make you drink. As you can see, there's all kinds of, woo, shark. There's all kinds of cool stuff in the water as well, but as a low level, you're probably gonna wanna stay out of the water as much as possible, unless you're just sticking to the shadows and killing like a Colio camp. Don't, I think that was an oval raptor. Anyway, Triceratops, those are also friendly. As long as you don't hit them, don't hit them. Don't take their eggs if you find their eggs on the beach because then they will attack you as well. So I'm going to make my house probably right here. Because I feel like it's, it's a good spot. It's a little raised so it makes it easier to see back and forth up and down the beach. It's also close to like rocks and the water. You're gonna wanna build your house close to water, especially in the beginning, because you need water to survive. This is a survival game. So let's go ahead and put down our campfire. Once you have it in your action bar, you just press whichever button you have it on. So I have it on the left uh, directional pad. I'm gonna go ahead like that. You can see the outline there, so I can move it around. I can move it a little closer to myself, a little farther away. And I'm just gonna use R2 to put it down. It will let you pick it up for a few seconds, but after those seconds, it won't let you pick it up anymore. You'll have to demolish the campfire to get it uh, out of the way. And it doesn't pick up anything if you demolish it. It only picks up some of the base items that you use to create it. So if I demolish this campfire, it's not going to give me a campfire. It's going to destroy my campfire and give me some rocks and sticks and stuff. So we can go access inventory. You can burn wood. You can burn thatch. And then later on, you can also burn um, something called spark powder. But I'll get to that much later. So I'm just going to throw my wood in there for now. I have a level up. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that level up using circle to open my inventory. And then using my left stick to go over here. Sometimes it's a little finicky. Sometimes you go too far and you have to go back. That's okay. Just take your time and don't get too frustrated. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into weight again because weight is super important. I'm going to start grabbing different things for building my house. So door frames, thatch walls, storage box. A storage box is going to be really, really important because you're going to get over encumbered really quickly. So let's start trying to get things to make a thatch foundation. We need fiber, thatch, and wood. So you can just go up to any tree. First, let's equip some of our other items. I'm going to go ahead and put the hatchet right here. And I'm also going to equip my torch. So if I want to whip my torch out, I use the down directional pad. If I want to have my hatchet out, I use the right directional pad. And if I want to have my pickaxe out, I use the up directional pad. So if you go up to a tree, if you want to get more thatch, you use the pickaxe because you're going to get much more thatch than you do wood. But if you use the axe, you're going to get much more wood than you do thatch. So in just a few chops, you have 95 wood and only 14 thatch. Also, it's a similar concept when you go up to rocks. If you go up to a big rock and you hit it with the axe like this, you're gonna get a lot more stone than you get flint. But if you wanna get more flint, you use the pickaxe and that's gonna get you much more flint than you get stone. Ooh, excuse 
excuse me. So I'm already over encumbered, which means I'm gonna move really, really slowly, as you can see. The last thing that I need to make different uh, items for my house is I need fiber. So to collect fiber, you're gonna equip your hands, which means put away whatever you're holding. Go up to any of these little plants and then press triangle. On the left hand side of your screen, you're gonna see that you get a whole bunch of berries. I'm getting uh, Amar berries, I'm getting fiber, Tinto berries, Narco berries. Let's look at our inventory. So, so I got all of this just now. I got some Azul berries. I got some fiber, which is perfectly what we need. I got some Amar berries, some Mayo berries, some Tinto berries, some Stimmy berries, Narco berries, and I also got some Tinto berry seed, which we'll get to the seed much later. So the number one thing about berries is do not eat the narco berries. They will put you to sleep. The description says this fairly common blackberry makes you sleepy when you eat it. Bitter, but can be used to make black dye. You're also going to need a lot of those later on for um, different concoctions that you're going to make to tame dinosaurs with. The only important berries really that I've found so far is the mayo berries, which is the purple ones and then the black ones, the narco berries. So the purple ones you're gonna use to tame a lot of different dinosaurs. So let's go ahead and make our thatch floor. And we can craft, I'm gonna make four of them to make kind of a decent sized house. And I'm also going to make, uh, let's make four door frames. I like having a lot of different exits because as you tame dinosaurs, they are going to follow you sometimes and block the door to your house. So it's always good to make multiple exits to your house. I'm gonna go ahead and up my health and up my weight. Okay, also grab water skin, walls, ceilings, and the storage box because that's gonna be so important. All right. So let's go ahead and start throwing down the stuff that we need for our house. We're going to open the inventory, select the foundation, and you're going to equip it. You can put it anywhere you like. And then to set it down, you're going to do pretty much the same thing that you did with the uh, campfire. So you go like that, you like it there, you hit R2, and then hit R2 a second time to place it finally. You can always mess with it in different ways, so you can always like turn it, do do various things with it. I'm a little stuck right here, and I'm encumbered, so that's why I'm moving so slowly. Oh no, I can't put this here, but I want to put this here. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so I'm gonna have like a weird shaped house. Uh, I'm just I'm just gonna have a weird shaped house. It's fine. Why can't I put it here either? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have the weirdest shaped house. Okay. Let me go ahead and grab this rock over here. No, okay, I guess this is just how my house is gonna look. So let's go ahead and put some door frames on this. So we're gonna equip the door frame, and then again we're gonna press R2. <coughs> and that should put down your door frame. So we're gonna go over here, put down another door frame. I really like having lots of different door frames because it makes it helpful, like I said, to get out. Or if a dinosaur is attacking your base on one side, hopefully you can use the other direction as a quick escape route and then run away while your, your base is being demolished. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of my video for now. Hopefully that was enough information to kind of get you started especially if you are not new to video games or maybe you're a little bit older and this is something you're doing in the quarantine to, to pass the time because you want to be stuck on a deserted island full of dinosaurs to tame. Look at this little fun little parasaur. He wants to be your buddy. He totally wants to be your buddy. Look at him. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay healthy.
You know what? I'm a dumb dumb. This is gonna record for another like <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> Okay, well, as you can see, I killed a dodo. I'm gonna go ahead and cook some of the meat up because we're gonna need meat. So when you run up to a campfire, oh my goodness, do you really? You have to do that right here. I'm trying to do a video for my parents. Can you maybe not? Oh my god, he's gonna make it shake. So, brontosauruses are jerks. Anyway, so you go up, you can either press triangle to put, put the fire on, light the fire, or put out the fire. Uh, you go and hold triangle will act as the inventory for you. And then you can go ahead and hold X and it will put the whole stack in there. And then you're going to want to light the fire so you can start cooking that meat up. Excuse me, sir. Could you maybe leave? I'm trying to do a video for my parents, like I said previously. If you could be so kind as to, uh... Go away. Oh, so bright. Brontosauruses are always messing up your stuff, just so you know. You're probably also going to want to make a weapon. Here is a great starter weapon. Make as many as you... Maybe not as many as you can, but try and keep at least ten on you in the beginning. Because they're going to break a lot when you use them to fight animals. Oh, goodness. So, let's... I'll show you if, if it doesn't cut out on me. They do. Believe me, they do. Look at that shark over there looking all scary. He's like, let's run back and uh, get some of our meat. I'm hungry. Hover over it, R2, and you eat it. You can see your food going up in the middle. You get 20 points for cooked meat. Mortar and pestle, also very important. storage chest. Thank <laughs> you. 